valleys, emotional highs, and heartbreaking lows. The rocky road is a tough one, but the traverse is necessary to reach championship heights. Kevin Harvick and Greg Biffle, however, are ready for the trek. All problems are behind them. It's time to concentrate on the ascent. They're making tracks fast and furious. No question in their minds, victory lane only leads to the summit. Just one week ago, Greg Biffle captured his first series win and backed that up by qualifying for us and setting his sights on victory lane once again. But there's a driver who twice this year has come one, one position short of a win. That's Kevin Harvick. He starts on the front row. He's won here before. This could be his best shot yet. Harvick may have a shot, but by this season needs a shot of adrenaline. He's 13th in points and has been a disappointment so far this year. He's on the pole today for the second year in a row here at Pikes Peak, and this may be the way for him to turn it around. He'll lead into the green today in the Napa 300K. Today, ESPN is live at Pikes Peak International Raceway for round seven of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. Today, it's the Napa 300K from Fountain, Colorado. Take a look at the championship points chase. Stacy Compton leads the 1998 and two-time champion Ron Hornaday by 20. Jack Sprague, our 97 champion, by 94. And let's talk a little bit more about Stacy Compton. Hello again, everybody. I'm Marty Reed, along with Jeremy Dale. This guy has not been flashy. He has not been overly aggressive, but he has been quietly effective. You're right, Marty. He has been doing what it takes to win championships, which is finishing races. He's finished in the top five in every single race this year. His team has done a phenomenal job to keep him in the hunt. Great pit stops, a great truck, and, of course, Dodge has done a lot with their R&D on the motor program and also on the aerodynamics. They've got the package. And you can see that the trucks are already out onto the racetrack for the first of three pace laps. Let's take a look at our Mopar starting grid. His 14th career pole, a new record. That's Mike Bliss at the point. Kevin Harvick with his best start in 1999 alongside. Another best start for Andy Houston. He's qualified number three. And our Memphis winner, Greg Biffle, will line up alongside. In row number three, Jack Sprague. And our uh, Homestead pole sitter, Randy Tolsma, alongside. On row four, number three, Jay Sauter coming off his best finish, a third at Memphis, and Stacy Compton, our points leader. Row five is Jimmy Hensley, our winner from Martinsville, and Butch Miller with his best starting position in 1999. Row six, Terry Cook, a great starting position in the Sealmaster Chevy, and Dennis Sensor in the Mopar Dodge. Now, as we look at the rest of the field, Marty Houston, he is uh, replacing Lonnie Rush in that 75 Spears truck. Randy Renfro is sitting in for Rick Corelli. More on Rick's condition after last week's crash. Take a look through the rest of the field. You'll see Kevin Sawinski, who's in the top 10 in points, did not do all that well in qualifying. But there's even some other names that will surprise you, especially as we move further down. Take a look there. Ron Hornaday back in row number 12. That's his worst starting position of the year. Lonnie Rush here in a different truck uh, alongside of David. Star Brian Refner still trying to help uh, John Conley get that one sorted out. Yes, there's the coach Jerry Glanville in row 15. Ryan McGlynn, Rick McRae, he's in a backup truck, an auto trim design Ford. Then there's Rob Morgan and Phil Bonifield in row number 17. Terry Fisher and Lonnie Cox in row 18. So we're on the pace laps, getting the tires heated up. Let's take a look at the race analysis. 186 laps in this Napa 300K. The purse over $430,000. The pit window, somewhere between laps 65 and 75. The race record held by Ron Hornaday last year, just over 89 miles an hour. And it's, this was a very important race last year. This was the first place we had live hot pit stops. And that should help these guys with their pit strategy, getting to know these racetracks. Don't forget, the truck series are going to only change two tires on the pit stops. On boards right now, first off, we're with uh, Ron Hornaday. That's the Napa Chevrolet. And we also have a camera on Mike Wallace's truck, the Team ASE Ford. And this is Jimmy Hensley in the Dodge by Petty Ram truck, number 43. And Andy Houston in the 60 truck, starting third to Cat Reynolds Shed. 
So lights are out on the pace truck, and we are going to be going green. Pikes Peak International Raceway, over a mile in the sky. In fact, the peak over to our left is 14,110 feet. Who's going to climb to the summit today at this racetrack? We're about to find out in the next 186 laps here on ESPN. Round seven is green. Harvick and Biff will get the early jump, and they put our pole sitter back to third. through turn four for the first time. Kevin Harvick is going to lead Greg Biffle. Isn't this where we left this off last week at Memphis? Except it was Biffle in front at the end of that one. Harvick leads. And, and Mike Bliss under pressure from Houston back in third. It's the fourth time this year that Kevin Harvick has led a race, ninth in his 50 career starts. Harvick is really on the edge here, breaking through. There's no question about it. Andy Houston running in fourth. A big question mark there. They had to change a motor after the last practice session yesterday. They lost the one that they really wanted to run. And it's a big question mark there. Look at this three of press. That's Terry Cook in the 88. Butch Miller is the meat in that sandwich. And the center in the number one is going to take the spot for both of them. That is for 11th position. Back to the battle for the lead side by side. Barfield, I'm sorry, not Barfield, but the Granger Ford of Greg Biffle alongside. Oh, Ian look at Harvey. Biffle. Look at Biffle. A big wiggle there coming off Ford. That is going to help. Look at that. There's Houston. Well, Bliss had to check up. Houston got around Bliss. The Bliss had a good run, but not as good as Houston. I'm surprised that Biffle was able to maintain that position down the front straightaway. On board with Andy Houston, the Cat Rental Chevrolet. So far, that replacement motor is doing the job. He's running in third. And he was not at all encouraged about that replacement motor because the motor they qualified with was such a good motor. On board again with Houston. That is Bliss right behind him. with Jimmy Hensley in the Dodge by Petty. That is Jay Sauter right in front of Hensley. Hensley's running eighth, Sauter's in seventh. Jimmy, our winner back at Martinsville. We've completed five of 186 laps. Everything sort of has calmed down here in the early go. Our race leader is Kevin Harvick. Stay with us. Series is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. By Mopar. Parts for Chrysler, Plymouth, Dodge, and Jeep vehicles from the dealerships that sell and install them. That's the Mopar difference. And by A1, the Steakhouse Secret. At Pikes Peak International Raceway, we're working lap number 11. Your race leader is Kevin Harvick. Greg Biffle is second. We did have a spin during the commercial break involving Coach Jerry Glanville. Did not bring out a yellow. No, no yellow, although it was very close. A little bit of contact here between turns one and two. And look at the coach. Heads it up to the wall. Finally gets the brakes locked up. Lucky not to collect any other trucks. Of course, this racetrack, very wide. A lot of room to move here at Pikes Peak. It looked like it was John Young that he got into some contact with in the 72. And uh, as a result, Young is six laps off the pace. He's in the pits right now. And right there is Jerry Glanville. He's being passed. He is uh, already a lap down. That's Ron Hornaday in the 16. And Hornaday has moved from his 24th starting position all the way up to 15th right now. So Hornaday has figured something out since qualifying. Yeah, he's sitting about six and a half seconds off the lead right now. He's not happy with that truck in practice. Just never got a handle on it. On board with Hornaday. That is Terry Cook right behind him there. And boy, has Cook ever fallen back. Cook had a good qualifying performance, started 11th, and has now fallen back to 16th. Back to the battle for fourth. Now that's Jack Sprague getting around Mike Bliss. We're on board with Andy Houston looking out his back and watching these two go after it. A little wave from Sprague. Sprague is not being all that happy with 
some of his uh, previous performances this year, although he has kept himself in the points chase, currently third. He wants to try and break out here on the super speedway, Pike Speak International. He's got Andy Houston in his gun sights right now. Houston uh, shown in a fourth position now, 1.7 seconds behind our race leaders. Randy Tolzma has since gotten around him, and here he's about to go back to fifth as uh, Sprague has moved around. And I have to say, watching uh, Happy Hour last night, Jack Sprague's truck was really the most impressive. He seemed to be able to get through the traffic better than anyone else in Happy Hour. Qualifying's one thing, but being, being able to work the truck in traffic really is much more important than the outright speed. Again, we're on board with Andy Houston. And he's got problems now with the 99 of Mike Bliss. Our pole sitter is right on his back bumper. While we're watching all this action going on, there is your race leader. Kevin Harvick has pulled out about five truck lengths over Greg Biffle. These trucks all running in roughly the 127 mile per hour range. There is Randy Tolzma. And he has bridged that gap up to Biffle. Now, Tolzma started sixth and has been on the march since the drop of the green flag and has really been impressive here. He's got that uh, Dodge right down on the, the white line through the corner. It's not drifting at all. We've seen a lot of tire slide here, especially if we just finished the Winston West race. And look at Tolzma underneath Biffle. The Biffle runs up the racetrack a little bit. And these two side by side coming out of four and of course this d-shaped racetrack it is curved all the way down the main straightaway it really has the potential to be very tough on right side tires although ironically they had problems with left side tires last year at this racetrack not a lot of banking so you can slide the truck a lot very easy to run the tires off the truck 10 degrees banking in the corners coming down the front straightaway it is seven degrees and literally from the time you enter turn three until you exit turn two you are turning the truck the only straightaway is the back straightaway and that's 1510 feet long and look who's rolling up behind here it's jack sprague he is the one that is being able to make a move here because these two are running side by side. Well, and while this battle is going on, it's not only allowing Sprague to close in, it's allowing Kevin Harvick to check out a little bit. There you can see Harvick at the bottom of your screen. He has now opened up about a 12 truck length lead. In fact, the margin on the clock has gone to a full second. Let's go to Dave Burns. He's got an update on Randy Tolzma. Marty, they are happy. They are just a tick tight off the corner. But that may be okay because this is the truck that sat on the pole at Homestead. And they looked at me yesterday and said, we think it's just as good as it was there. Well, he did put on a stellar qualifying performance and ran pretty well in the uh, early part of that race. Here comes Sprague looking to the inside. Not going to be able to get it done. Well, this has the potential to be three wide here shortly. There's the transition up to Kevin Harvick. So Harvick in control of the race with a 1.1 second lead. He's opening it up a little bit each lap here at the Napa 300K. Buckle up it. The NASCAR Craft Truck Series today, round seven from Pikes Peak International Raceway. And we're on board with Mike Wallace, who has moved up four spots from 16th to 12th, right in front of him is the Remax Chevrolet, normally driven by Rick Corelli. Of course, if you were with us last week at Memphis, Rick hit the wall hard, sustained uh, several injuries, uh, and is in the Memphis Regional Medical Center. We're going to uh, be talking to him, hopefully, by phone here sometime during the race. Randy Renfro has taken over the ride. He said, I didn't want it this way. I'm going to do the best I can for Rick. Rick, we know you're watching, and we are all thinking and pulling for you, buddy. And we had a chance to talk to him before. Gosh, he sounds good, considering how hard he hit that wall. And here is the super sub. He has had 22 starts. His best finish was ninth. And uh, last year at Pikes Peak, he was actually running at ten, second place until they ran out of fuel in the MCI Dodge. He did have a great run here last year. And, and you know, he had nothing but the greatest things to say about the team that really made him feel very welcome. And he just wants to do a great job. And he wants to do it for the team and for Rick and for everyone. There is Mike Stefanik in the 66 getting around Mike Wallace. And uh, let's uh, get an update on uh, Randy Renfro, David Burns. 
Marty, folks might wonder if Randy Renfro is out of practice. Well, I don't think that's going to matter because I played golf with him this week. It was the first time he had ever played, and he hit the ball well. I asked him, how did you do that? He was a three-sport athlete in high school and held a regional scoring title in basketball for three years in a row. If he's been out of the truck for just a few months, I think he'll know how to drive it when he hops back in today. Do you notice he didn't talk about his golf game in that uh, entire sequence there? Well, I'm, yeah, I'm sure we'll it. get to that. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go back to the battle for a second. Look at this. Biffle, Tolsma, Sprague, and Bliss. This is all for position. Sprague is inside of Tolsma. Can he make it stick? It looks like he's got the position. Here comes Bliss trying to follow right on through. Great move by Jack Sprague coming off turn four. Little wiggle there. Little wiggle there. Keeping the truck down tight. And that is letting Biffle drop away from these guys at this very moment. And Bliss was able to take advantage by going the high side, and he has now moved around Sprague. But this battle isn't over yet. Oh, my, here we go. We're going to go three wide down the stretch. Who's going to get off the throttle first? Well, Sprague says, OK, guys, I'll, it's early in the race. Oh, no, a tire going down on the 25. Randy Tolzman does a great job to just brush the wall. It looked like the right front went down on his truck. And you can see the chassis. You can see all the sparks, the chassis down on the ground. There it is. And the yellow is out. Our first caution of the day here on lap number 31. And he is nursing the number 25 super guard dodge around to get into pit lane he's going to lose at least one lap because it happened in turn number one let's take another look and here they are down the main straightaway and right there the tire goes down and there's nothing he can do and rick corelli knows about that but just in, you know an incredible effort there to get the thing turned and just Rush the wall. Not a big hit at all, considering what that could have been. Oh, but that, look at that fender well. It is torn up badly in there. They're going to have to do some work as he uh, makes his way into pit lane. And he's all the way at the far end. Dave Burns, you're there. It's all yours. These guys have been practicing pit stops all week, and now they have to put it to task. Tim Shutt has the hardest job on the right front. He will go to it as Russ Fretz gets the jack up there. They're going to try to get that bad tire off and put another one on. Tolsma had been moving up and trying to pass for about 15 laps as you saw and unfortunately lost that right front tire they're gonna have to carry to get him back out he does pull away here comes the rest of the field down into pit lane in fact everybody except Jack Sprague on that first serial you've got the Biffle coming in Harvick coming in Bliss and Andy Houston so there are the the four Sprague the only one in the top five to stay out let's go to Amy East a slow spin stop he put two right side tires boy harvick did lose some positions the other guy that stayed out oh we've got a loose tire on pit road it looks like uh, terry cook was the only one who hit it but he hit it with the rear quarter panel and it's finally out of harm's way well harvick did lose some positions a slow stop for harvick the other guy that stayed out though, though was stacy compton and also Randy Renfro. So it is Jack Sprague, Stacy Compton, and Randy Renfro wanting one, two, three here at the Napa 300K. Stay with us. Take a look at the right front corner on Greg Biffle's Granger Ford. It is crinkled in just slightly, and the reason is the pit stop. Let's go back and take a look. And you can see that tire laying out in between those two trucks. They drop the truck down, and, and Greg leaves. I mean, that's what he's supposed to do. That tire should not have been there. And there you can see the results. And Biffle can't see that, of course. Uh, he's just looking to get out. And in fact, that's what it looks like for Mike Wallace. And here's the problem coming out. There's the tire being pushed by Butch Miller. It comes over. Looks like Wallace got by it OK, but Terry Cook did end up brushing it. Now, one guy who had a very long start was Kevin Harvick. He has come back out in 10th position. There were four trucks that stayed out. The top four have stayed out. Let's get an update on uh, Harvick's pit stop. Dave Burtz. Marty Reed, they were, there was a little confusion in their pit, but they had a real problem with the right rear. That was the biggest problem for Kevin. 
and he got it back out. Now, Mike Bliss was a little bit loose on the track. That's why he was moving back, but he started to tighten up with the cloud cover. He told me just before we got going that he thought the clouds would tighten things up. They did put a spring rubber in the right rear this morning. That may have made him a little loose, but the cloud cover now appears to be making Bliss work a lot better. Right now, Mike Bliss is running in eighth position. The top five, the first four stayed out. Jack Sprague, Stacy Compton, Randy Renfro, and Lonnie Rush. Then it's uh, Andy Houston, who was first out of the pits in fifth. Jay Sauter, sixth. Greg Biffle, seventh. The Mike Bliss is eighth. Dennis Setzer is ninth. And Harvick is tenth. Before we go green, stay tuned for next week. We'll be just outside of Kansas City at uh, Odessa at I the O'Reilly Auto Parts 200. It's next Saturday on ESPN, round eight of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. For more, you can log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. We're still under yellow, our first of the day here at the Napa 300. We're working lap 39. Napa 300K. The lights are out on the pace truck. We're about to go back to green flag racing. Jack Sprague is at the point. He finished 31st here last year. He had an engine problem. It was his worst finish of the 1998 season. He has nine career super speedway wins. Speaking of uh, Randy Tolsma, well, let's get an update from Dave Burns. They changed the right side tires, Marty, and came in three more times for repairs. They don't think there's any damage other than the fender, which is going to make him push because he's going to lose a lot of downforce on the right front. We're back to green flag racing. Tolsma currently shown in 27th position. The last truck on the lead lap at Sprague gets a good start. Stacy Compton right behind him and Randy Renfro sitting in for Rick Corelli in third. So these four decided not to come in. They've got about 30 laps on these tires. They should be in reasonable shape for another little while. Look at Compton down there straddling that white line. Jack Sprague, last time he led a race in the series here this year was back at Mesa Marin. He has nine career super speedway wins. In fact, uh, he, he used to own Phoenix International Raceway. Nobody could beat him there. Looking back here, here comes Andy Houston inside of Randy Renfro. That is a battle for third. It looks like Houston, despite having to go to that backup motor, they have made the right adjustment side by side. Nope. Renfro's going to hold the spot. I think the motor in the Remax uh, truck is a pretty good motor. Right behind them, look at the three of Jay Sauter. There's Greg Biffle. Here comes Mike Bliss. Now, he is on the move. The Killer Bees, Bliss and Biffle, the teammates from Roush Racing, they're watching all this right in front of them. Here comes Houston taking another run at it. Now, these are the guys that are on fresh right side tires. They should have an advantage, no question about it. Boy, look at Bliss. He has just gone by both Biffle and Sauter. Our pole sitter made the right adjustment during the pit stop, and he is on the move on board with Andy Houston. Renfro still side by side. And now here comes Biffle right back. He's side by side with Bliss. Sauter's looking at all this saying, please, guys, don't make a mistake. Yeah, I think I'll just hang back here and uh, let these guys sort this out. Only the 44th lap. There's plenty of time here. Houston again underneath Renfro. This time he pulls a little bit ahead. Will he have the horsepower down the straightaway? No. The Remax Chevrolet has the giddy up to get going again. But then in the corners, it looks like Houston's got a little better truck. And here comes Biffle now tucking in underneath Houston. Well, you know, Marty, I think the quickest trucks here are probably Biffle and Bliss in those two Ford trucks. But they can't do anything right now. Well, Biffle just did something. He got around both Bliss. Well, wow, that's, 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 that was pretty good. Well, move. that's the first step. But now what he wants to do is, is deal with Houston here, get by Houston. There's a little onboard telemetry, Circuit City onboard telemetry, Andy Houston's truck. Watch for the top speed. 157. Wow. I think I saw 158 there. They really drive these trucks down into the corners here at Pikes Peak. Well, remember, and they're averaging around 127, 128 for the lap. So 155 that time. 
Look at the run here Biffle's got. Look at that. He's underneath it, able to get to the throttle and get off turn four much, much better than Andy Houston. And Bliss is trying to tuck in underneath his teammate. Can't seem to do it right there. Meanwhile, that is Sprague on the far left of your screen. Compton right behind him there in the 86. Sprague is our race leader. That is a battle for third between Houston and Biffle. And the 99 rounds out our top five, Mike Bliss. Back on board with Houston. see any tire marks these guys are doing it clean nobody ready to play physical yet and you can you get a good look there at the right front on Biffle's truck and aerodynamically that is significant because this place is quick and those aerodynamics are very important on these trucks well the guys were talking about how the draft really comes into play here you can not only take air off that rear spoiler but you get somebody who can you partner with you can really pick up some speed Look at this battle. We're on board with Jimmy Hensley. The three is Jay Sauter. The six is Randy Renfro. And Randy is not leaving him a whole lot of room. I mean, there's some racing room there, but he's not giving anything away. That's the battle for sixth. Whoa, going to have... <laughs> I thought we were in the wall. I thought, I thought we were going to be scraping the Remax Chevrolet off the right side of the wall there. Sauter is underneath him. Here they come. Hensley's going to... Pony up with the six of Renfro. Not going to be able to do it. And Renfro manages to close the door on Sauter. And there's Harvick right there. And Dennis Setzer in the number one truck. And Stefanik, of course, rolling up behind them. So, you know, the side you can race side by side. You're just not going to go particularly fast racing side by side. Look at this battle for second. Greg Biffle side by side with Stacy Compton, our points leader. Now, if Compton holds true to form, he'll just let Biffle have the position. He'll save his truck. He won't contest it very physically. Brings this thing home cleaner than just about anybody else. But he's been consistently in the top five all six races. And he did it again. Compton has been good. Look at that. Oh, Houston's got to watch out. He almost got pinched off by the slower truck there. The, I, I think he, he didn't know if that truck was, was headed for pit lane or not. He thought maybe the, the truck was going to go down on the apron. He could slide through there, and that was not the case. Well, that was Chris Horn. It's the first time Chris has been driving this series this year, so obviously you're not used to each other's maneuvers. So let's take a look at what's going on at the top of the leaderboard. Well, it's Jack Sprague in front of Greg Biffle at the Napa 300K. Eleven blue plaid warriors stand on the brink of battle and ask themselves, where is the other team? Ruben, on a Sunday afternoon. Nothing helps you kick back at the end of the day like Tostitos chips and salsa. I can't imagine it. We do suggest you actually better. wait till the end of the day. He's a fine dancer, too. Kumbaya. Dig in, kick back with new Hint of Lime Tostitos. Kumbaya. Pikes Peak International Raceway. Greg Biffle has just taken the lead from Jack Sprague here on lap number 56. And Biffle is on the move. I mean, he made it look pretty easy. Well, he made it look pretty easy, but don't forget, Jack Sprague did not come in and change tires. Greg Biffle did. And that's a really the, the biggest part of this. And now we've got the truck of Bliss rolling up behind these two. Let's go back and have a look at it. This is coming off turn four. And you can see Sprague just can't, can't keep that truck down. And Biffle gets alongside. There's just not much Jack Sprague can do about that. He doesn't even really contest it because he knows. And you're right behind him. Mike Bliss has pulled into third. It is in fourth place, the 60 of Andy Houston. And now Stacy Compton has dropped back to fifth again. Here is uh, Bliss trying to reel in the front runners. And Bliss right now uh, is going a little bit quicker on the last lap, went a little, little bit quicker than these two. Of course, they were running side by side. Well, Jack Sprague not keeping up that easily. Look at the message uh, for Rick Corelli. We want him all to get well here at PPIR. And uh, guess what? We've got him on the phone. Rick, are you there? I'm here, Marty. Well, how are things at the Memphis Medical Regional Center for you, buddy? I mean, it's so great to hear your voice. Well, I'll tell you what, from a week ago, from what I've gone through, I'm 350% uh, better. Now, we, 
We understand you took that. There's the crew cheering on Randy Renfro. Right now, we can tell you Randy's running a good, solid sixth position, and I know you want to be out there. This has broken your string. You had run all 103 prior races, but give us an update medically on, on your injuries and how you're doing. Well, actually, uh, I got one more arterial gram they're going to do tomorrow, tomorrow morning, where they go up and check my arteries up in uh, my neck, and uh, that's one of the things they got to check. They think I may have a little problem last week, but uh, they just want to make sure. And then uh, after that, uh, I got a problem with one of my eyes. I seen a little, I seen double vision with one eye toed in, and uh, they say that's just basically from the brain swelling, and uh, everything should be fine. But I want to be so thankful for what I've gone through. You know, last week was such a hard thing on all my family, my wife. I don't want to get emotional here, but uh, it's uh, it's pretty tough. Well, I know. Uh, one thing about it, you know, I switched to Randy LeJoy's seat slash as it started this year, and I think that was a big part of uh, what saved me. Because uh, if I would have had any kind of rib injury or anything like that, I would have been, uh, I'd have been in big trouble. Well, it is great to hear your voice. We are wishing you for a speedy recovery. Uh, we know it's going to be a few more weeks. Uh, Randy's going to be in the truck again next week for you. Uh, don't push it too soon, though, buddy. I, I know how aggressive you are and how much you want to be back here on the racetrack, and we want you back, but uh, take it easy. Well, thank you very much, Marty, and uh, I just want to tell everybody that's called and praying for me, and uh, I see Hornaday's truck there. It says, get well, Rick. Yeah, in fact, everybody's got decals that has... Uh, the High Plains Drifter, get well. I mean, all of us are pulling for you, Rick. It's great to hear from you. There is the, the decal that's on everybody's truck. And in fact, if I get a chance, uh, I'm going to sneak a few home with me. So, uh, all right, Marty, it's great hearing from you. Next time I'll play golf with you. <laughs> yeah, you were supposed to. You'll do anything to get out playing golf. But of course, at, knowing my game, I can understand why. I can probably throw farther than I can get. <laughs> you take care, Rick. Say hi to Kathy and the family for us. All right, thank you for having me on. So, Rick Torelli doing very well. Memphis Medical Regional Center, and that was the best news that we got all week long. But it was a hard hit, and he just sounds so good. And uh, and it's it's nice for him to be able to sit and watch this race and see that uh, Randy is driving that truck hard and doing a good job. But they all want him back terribly. Let's get you back into this race. Greg Biffle is in front of Jack Sprague by that margin. That ends up being about four tenths of a second on the clock. Mike Bliss is third, Andy Houston is fourth, and Stacy Compton is running in fifth. So Bliss uh, trying to, to help out and getting tied up with his uh, teammate there at the front, but he's got to get around Sprague. He's got to catch up to him. Let's go to Dave Burns. Marty, a few laps ago, Greg Biffle radioed in and said, guys, we have an awesome truck. His crew chief, Randy Goss, ever the patient teacher, said, Greg, save those tires. Now, for Jack Sprague running in second, he is the best in the middle of the corner, and that's been the toughest place to run all weekend long. And we just saw, oh, we got a spin. Lance Norick has turned it around. And he has got uh, right down on the front straightaway here in front of us. He's got it back out on the race track. He did not hit the wall. No yellow. And we are going to stay under green right now. So we have still only had one yellow flag. Lance Norick has got it back on the race course, but he's lost a lot of track position. In fact, he has gone a lap down as a result. Caught the tail end of it. And there he is, going all the way around. Well, it doesn't look like he hit anything. And when you look at the skid marks, it, it didn't look like he hit anything. The hardest, hardest part now is did he flat spot the tires? Well, I, I guarantee you they're not in great shape. There's our race leader, Greg Biffle. He's coming up to lap Brian Refner. And Refner goes a lap down. Stay with us. Biffle in control of the Napa 300K, but we got a long way to go. Along with Jeremy Dale, I'm Marty Reed. Patrolling pit lane today, Amy East and Dave Burns, as always. We're here at round seven of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. You're looking at race leader Greg Biffle as he has opened up a 1.7 second lead over Jack Sprague. Sprague is running out of tires. Take a look at our Napa Field summary. Bliss is third, Andy Houston fourth, Stacy Compton in fifth. Now, the guy I'm looking at right there is the ninth position. Crawford's come from 22nd, and Rick has put it into ninth. He's done a great job, and he's got a new motor in that truck, and, and he was very encouraged about that motor as we look at 16th through 30th. And there you see Randy Tolsma down in 19th. 
And yeah. Tolsma still on the lead lap, but 18 seconds off the lead. The other surprise that we needed to point out was in 14th position, Ron Hornaday has not been able to make any further ground. No, not making a big impression right now. That's not to say that they won't improve that truck, but they're just not making the impression they need to make. There is Butch Miller, Jay Sauter. Right there, they are running for 11th position. Up ahead of them uh, is Jimmy Hensley in 10th, and in front of that batter, battle is the 14. And that's Jay Sauter's spotter we were listening to there. Mike Stefanik in the 66. He's watching all this happen right in front of him. That 17 truck was Lonnie Rush slowing down, heading for pit lane. Big question we have to look at now. You got Rick Crawford. There he is, running up in the ninth spot. What a comeback for the Circle Bar RV Motel Ford. That, that truck is on the move. I mean, he's pulling away from Hensley. For an update on Rick Crawford, let's go to Dave Burns. Marty, that is the truck last week that passed every truck except one during the day at some point, and that one truck was Kevin Harvick. It's a fast truck, but yesterday they broke a motor in happy hour. They had to put a new one in, but the way they figure it, Robert Yates motor to Robert Yates motor, they weren't worried a bit, and the 14 is running just fine, even though Rick Crawford has bronchitis and is not feeling well. And while this is going on, Stacy Compton is pulling into the pits and pulling behind the wall. This is a major surprise. The first time that Stacy Compton has missed a beat all season long. He has finished in the top five of all six races. And when I saw him roll down pit lane, I thought, okay, he was one of the trucks that didn't stop on that yellow and that it was a green flag pit stop. He just needed fuel. We had no idea that he was in major mechanical problems. Take a look at this. Top fives. He has not finished lower than fifth. He's the only driver to be in that position. And right now, it doesn't look like it's going to happen. He is off the track and is already a lap down. Dave, you there? I saw Stacy Compton's head snap down with a, when he said something, he was not happy. This thing apparently lost a cylinder. They've shut it off. They're gonna go to work on the interior of the motor of this fast Dodge. This is gonna shake up the points championship. Ron Hornaday was only trailing by 20 coming into today's race. Jack Sprague was only 94 behind. And there is the number 50 of Greg Biffle, who has been on the move after winning Memphis last week. He is uh, getting around some slower traffic there. He has a 2.8 second lead over Sprague. And we've got to start wondering about Sprague, not only tires, but fuel work to lap 80. Well, that's what I said. I thought Com Compton was making a green flag pit stop. The Dodgers are a bit thirsty, so I thought he would be in before Sprague. But Sprague cannot go too much longer. We did have some yellow flag laps there, but Sprague is not going to be able to run a whole lot longer. You saw as Biffle goes by again, the 75. That was Marty Houston pulling into the pit lane. He is uh, further back in the field. Biffle is on the move, though. He is well in control by three seconds here at the Napa 300K. By General Motors. Let's see what Irwin does here on the last lap. If he's going to be content to just stay where he is. Oh, a car turning it all sideways. we got something happen up there. He slowed way down. And look at this. Oh, Lewis is on the outside of him. Right. He's got a chance to win this race. He's going to make a race out of it. They come down to the line. Oh, 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 oh my God, they went through that side by side. Well, if you thought it was exciting, it is. It's Thunder, Saturday, May 22nd, 9.30 Eastern from Indianapolis Raceway Park, the Coca-Cola 100. Davey Steele holds a seven-point lead over Brian Tyler going into the 100-lap event. It's on ESPN2, Saturday, May 22nd, 9.30 Eastern. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, Go.com. Back here at Pikes Peak International Raceway, Greg Biffle is our race leader by three seconds over Jack Sprague. Sprague is still out on the racetrack. Uh-oh, and the 25 of Randy Tolzer right in front of us has slowed down dramatically, and he's got another right front tire gone. He is sending shards of rubber all over the place. Yeah, this isn't a replay from earlier. This is his second tire to go down. This could bring out a, a yellow for debris at least, and that would be a godsend to some of these guys that did not stop earlier. Especially Jack Sprague. And this is a this is an exact replay of what happened to Randy Tolzma, except he didn't get up and kiss the wall. 
and he was doing a great job, had that truck back up into about 14th position and was running very quickly, and there is the full course yellow. The yellow finally comes out, and Sprague was five full seconds behind Greg Biffle. I bet you he is breathing fumes. We're working lap number 90. I can't believe the fuel mileage he got. Here comes Randy Tolzma into pit lane for the second time with a flat right front, and he is sending a lot of sparks out from underneath as well. Dave, uh, deja vu all over again, buddy. You know, we're going to have to check brake hoses on Randy Tolzma and see if he had any problem like Ron Hornaday last week. And, and uh, Jeremy, you were right. They were running times faster than the leaders. Apparently, there was no problem with that push. So they're going to go ahead and change two right side tires, fuel him up. And you are also right about Jack Sprague. This was absolutely the brake he needed. They are at their fuel window now. Incredible fuel economy run for Sprague, making it to lap number nine. Remember, we are going today 186 laps, so he almost made it to the midway. And what is more impressive about that is that he wasn't, yes, Biffle was out in front, but in terms of speeds, he was really not that much slower, within about a mile an hour. So not only great fuel economy, but great handling to make that truck just go basically as quick as Biffle as they roll down on the pit road. We'll keep our eyes open. Looks like everybody that is on the lead lap, yes, will take advantage, except uh, Dennis Setzer has decided to stay out. He's currently running in fifth position. And so uh, pit stops are going to be fast and furious here. Jack Sprague has pulled it in. Let's go to Dave Burns. Sprague pulls it in. They will take on two tires. They would have taken four if they had stopped under green. Now they'll just get two. And they've got a new rear tire changer. Corey Quick came over from the 43 truck. He is the last to finish. A little trouble back there. Now he's done. Also, Greg Biffle has to back out of his pit. They took on left side tires on Biffle. And they're going to try to get him back in the way. But it looks like Mike Bliss's team may have had the best pit stop of all. As uh, was it that or was it Harvick? No, Bliss then Harvick. So we're going to see some changes here at the front of this uh, race. As there is Kevin Harvick, but even a little bit further ahead of that is Mike Bliss. As there is. Oh, and Mike Wallace has got a big problem as they're in the pit. So it looks like they had trouble with the right rear getting that one on on the number two truck. He was well back in 16th position and making it back out onto the racetrack. Dennis Setzer, we can tell you, is pulling into the pits now as we'll take a break and be back with more. Phoenix, or back at Pikes Peak International Raceway, and we're getting ready to go back to green flag racing. But first, let's tell you about RPM tonight on ESPN2. We'll have Truck Series highlights from right here at Pikes Peak. Winston Cup highlights from Richmond. Congratulations to Dale Jarrett. And highlights from the NHRA event in Atlanta. At 7 o'clock Eastern tonight, 4 o'clock Pacific. Reese Davis has got it. We're back to green flag racing. We're side by side. Kevin Harvick with a huge restart around the outside of Mike Bliss the pass on the right hand side before you hit the starting finish line and that's exactly what Harvick did got a great jump over Mike Bliss retakes the lead second time he's led today and meanwhile Randy Tolzman now has the hood up they have a bigger problem after that second tire going down Greg Biffle has also moved into the third spot now he's right behind his teammate Mike Bliss Jack Sprague is in fourth looks like uh, Lance Norick in fifth now the first three guys all took left side tires on that stop. Jack Sprague took right side tires. So did Randy Renfro take right side tires, as did Mike Stefanik. So we're going to watch those trucks that have fresh right side rubber. Word from the pits is the 25 has a broken sway bar. So that is going to be a long repair. And let me correct one thing. It's the 60, not the 90. In this spot, that's Andy Houston. But he's about to lose it. Because he just got a glimpse right there. Here they come through. Side by side, Jimmy Hensley is underneath Andy Houston. On board with Andy. Hensley looks like he's got the horsepower, he's got the position. But here comes Houston back. Boy, for having a motor that they had to replace, and they were not real thrilled about having to take the primary motor out. He just took the position back. And there's his brother, Marty Houston, the 75. They have raced together before. In fact, they're very competitive. Some of the stories they were telling. About, uh, look at this, the battle for the lead heating up. Mike Bliss going after Kevin Harvick, and it looks like he may get him coming out of four. 
Heading for the strike. Who's got it on the board? It'll be Harvick, but not by much. And going into one, Bliss has the preferred line. But Harvick managing to hold on. Yeah, but look at Jack Sprague, Marty. Jack Sprague is right there. You give him five or six laps, and I think he's going to be leading this race. Dave Burns has an update on Greg Biffle. Dave? Marty, big problems for Greg Biffle. He does not have third gear. They think when he backed the truck up and tried to go forward with it that they broke the third gear at that point. So he's running fine. He's running in high gear, but they say that thing's going to blow up any moment. So watch out. Biffle has a transmission that's going south. Oh, that's a shame because he's coming off that great win at Memphis, and he had a strong truck here, and right now it's still running strong. Hopefully he can hold it together. Right now he's under attack from Jack Sprague in the 24 GMAC Chevy. Well, the bigger worry is if that gearbox does blow up and lays a bunch of oil down, and he's got that whole field lined up behind him. Watch out. He goes high as we're on board with Jimmy Hensley in fifth, and Sprague's underneath him. Can't get the job done, though, as the Granger Ford able to hold on to the position. Oh. Is that a little fluid coming up on our camera lens there? Is that smoke coming out of the back of the Granger's hole? It was hard to tell. I saw what you saw. It was just hard to tell exactly what it was. Circuit City telemetry on Jimmy Hensley. Going down the back straightaway, we saw speeds upwards of 150 plus, but he gets about 146. But he's closing in on Jack Sprague. That's what the view looks like from the outside. Bliss, Biffle, Sprague, Hensley. Up front is Kevin Hart. Harvick's opened up about three and a half, four truck lengths over Mike Bliss. Take a look at the next step for Kevin Harvick. In six races, he's been second twice. The last two, in fact, remember the very first race of the season, he finished a very dismal 27th. He has moved from that 27th position to sixth in the points. And the thing that impressed me most about that entire process was he had two back-to-back -back races where they were just horrible, 27th and 23rd, but he never lost his confidence. He said, I, I know we can do better. I'm not panicking. We're not going to push the button. We're just going to keep doing what we do. And it's obvious when you watch him drive the truck, he, he's got his act together. He knows what he's doing, and he's going to be there. Got a battle going on. Now, that is the 75 of Marty Houston. Now, he is uh, back in the pack a little bit further there with the three of Jay Sawyer. Here comes the 66 of Mike Stefanik around. Mike Wallace is in that mix as well. That's uh, for seven, eight, ninth, and tenth on board with Wallace, who's running in tenth. Stefanik, one of those trucks that took right side tires on that last stop instead of left. Wallace underneath Sauter there into turn three. So Wallace picks up the spot. Here they come past the strike one more time. While all this is going on, Andy Houston, we can tell you, is backing up towards this battle as he is uh, hung out on the outside. Like, there he is. Uh, the, the six of Randy Renfro has gotten around him. That should make uh, Rick Corelli feel a little bit better back in the Memphis Municipal Regional Center. And his brother, there's Andy and Marty Houston. Uh, Marty is two laps down, but boy, he's about to go by his brother. Go down to Dave Burns for more on this brother story. Hey, this is like old time for the Houstons. They used to do this at Hickory Motor Speedway, and they've each won a championship there. And when they did it, the brother, the other brother, was looking in the rearview mirror all the, day, all the, all the way long. Their father, Tommy, is here today, and it's a proud moment for the Houston family. Well, there was one time when uh, one of them took the other out. In fact, it was Marty as we got a battle for the lead. Here comes the 24, Jack Sprague. He's got it. He's going to move into the front spot away from Kevin Harvick. Whoa, well, here comes Kevin right back. Can he take it back? Doesn't look like it's going to happen. Sprague managing to get some horsepower down on the track. That 24 truck is really hooked up. No question about it. And look at Sprague's mile an hour, 127.8 over one and a half quicker than in second place now. Kevin Harvick, now you understand why he's got that race lead. Well, let's watch how quick he really is because this will be the first time since the yellow flag that he's had clean, clear racetrack out in front of him. So we'll see what Jack Sprague can really do here. 
Well, stay with us. Jack Sprague is out in front as we have passed the halfway mark of the Napa 300K here at the Craftsman Truck Series. the lead here in round seven of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. It's Jack Sprague in front of Kevin Harvick by about three-tenths of a second. Sprague uh, started fifth, managed to move his way to the front, and has uh, been a very steady competitor in the top five all race long. We're working lap number 115 of 186. Now, Harvick has finished second in our last two races. He's moved up to sixth in the points. Let's get an update from Dave Burns. Remember, he was falling back earlier. In fact, after he had the bad pit stop, he couldn't work his way back up through. The problem was the truck does not handle in traffic. He was fast when he was out in the open air, but he was stuck in traffic, and it was weaving all over the place. Now that he's out there in freer air, Kevin likes the truck much better and should be fast as long as he stays clean in clean air. And the margin is right now about four tenths of a second. Here's a good battle. Third place, Jimmy Hensley, right in front of fourth place, Greg Biffle. Now, Hensley, uh, on the way over here as we go on board, Jimmy, he stopped off and saw Rick Corelli at the hospital. He is racing today with the flu, however. He is not feeling all that well. He sort of got it when he got here to the racetrack, and it's been knocking him down pretty good. He's currently 16th in the points position, and the guy right behind him, Greg Biffle, well, he's been moving up. Finished 17th here last year. He's currently running for it, but of course, coming off that big win last week at Memphis, and he's looking underneath Jimmy Hensley. Well, both these guys have great trucks. Here's a guy on the move, Renfro in the sixth truck. Again, one of those trucks that took right side tires on that last stop, and right now he is running in fifth position, about three seconds off the lead. Qualified 15th. His first comment to me was, I want to race, but I don't want to take somebody's ride. This is Rick Corelli's ride. I'm just here to help the team out. And here is the guy that has really moved up, the number two of Mike Wallace. Now, he started 16th, and he is about to take fifth position away. And the last few laps, he is just flying. He's about a mile an hour faster than everybody. And Amy East, you got an update on Mike Wallace? Marty, you're exactly right. It's unbelievable how well the number two truck has been going. Tim Cahooth has decided no chassis adjustments for them. Let's just play with the tire pressure. And so far, it's worked out great. So the combination of fast stops and smart adjustments have helped launch Mike Wallace up through the field. He has just taken over the fifth spot, and he won the Winston West race a little bit earlier after coming back from two laps down. So could he make it a double today? Well, Mike Bliss would like to say no way. Mike, our pole sitter here, here and the second time in a row that he sat on the pole. He's currently running in seventh position, about five seconds behind the race leader. Here's the interesting thing about Mike. He, in that golf tournament that they played uh, on Friday, he won for closest to the pin, uh, 10 inches away. He got four tickets to a Vince Gill concert. Guess what? It's next week while we're in Kansas City, so we had to give him away. There is uh, Marty Houston. He's a little bit further back. He's about two laps down. We're moving our way back to the number three of Jay Sauter. He's running in eighth position right now. He started seven. He's moved up a little bit, moved back a little bit. It's been about the story today for Jay. Well, and the idea is let's keep the truck on the racetrack, stay on the lead lap, make sure you've got a good truck, and, and you know, last 50 laps, let's worry about where we're at. But the truck has been good. The, the, you know, they're not going backwards, but they're not exactly coming through the field like Mike Wallace. Here's ninth and 10th. A good battle going on between Mike Stefanik. Started 18th, and there is Butch Miller trying to take the position away. In fact, looks like he is going to do that. Butch with his best start of the year in 10th. And here comes Ron Hornaday into the mix, finally getting back into the flow. He is in 11th, and there is Rick Crawford. They're currently in 12th. So this is all four position between these four trucks. That's how good this series is in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series all the way back through 12th position. We've got a battle going. Side by side, Hornaday, you can see the serial there, started 24th. He just finally gets passed there for the position by Rick Crawford. So that moves Crawford into 11th, bump uh, Hornaday back to 12th. The 86 of Stacy Compton, we can tell you, is back out onto the racetrack. He is in 31st position. 39 laps down, he is not going to finish in the top five today, so the streak is going to end at six. Well, maybe we jinxed him, maybe we didn't, but 
the, the, the point is get the truck fixed, get it back out on the racetrack, gather whatever you can in points and move on. And that's exactly what they're doing. Yeah, never give up because you never know at the end of the season. I mean, last year, this championship was decided on the last lap of the final race by three points between Ron Hornaday and Jack Sprague. Speaking of Jack Sprague, I didn't even know they were going to do that to us, but there he is, our race leader. And he is now pulling the margin out on Harvick. 126 miles an hour versus 124 on the last lap. But Dave, you have an update? Jeremy, this is a day of pushing the limit for the 24 team. Remember earlier, they were at their fuel window. They wanted to change four tires under green. They did not get a chance to do that. So their left side tires, they've run every lap here. They checked with Goodyear and asked Billy, uh, asked Billy from Goodyear how long the tires would go. He said about 125 laps. So right now, they're gonna have to think about coming in under green for left side tires. Well, it's interesting you said lap 125 because that's the lap we are just completing right now, Dave Burns. So keep an eye and ear open for the 24 to perhaps make that green flag stop. While we've got uh, Jack on the screen there and we look at our Napa field summary, there is the margin back to uh, second, third, and fourth as uh, the two truck has moved into third past Greg Biffle. Boy, I'll tell you what, Mike Wallace, if he pulls this off, the double today could be amazing. Well, let's not forget he won at Homestead on the Super Speedway. So this this team and and, and this truck, they are well equipped to, to go fast on these Super Speedways. While all this is going on, look at the Randy Tolzma back out onto the racetrack. There is Jimmy Hensley. He had to come in for a green flag stop. That is going to cycle him back farther in the field. And uh, it has already put him one lap down. So Hensley loses what was a top five run because he had to stop under green. Now working lap number 128, Jack Sprague still out there and running strong. Is it his day to finally get his first victory of 1999? We'll find out. A lot of racing yet to go at the Napa 300K. Street Loose is my favorite. We're back at uh, Pikes Peak International Raceway. Jack Sprague, guess who has closed in? Look at the number two of Mike Wallace. Took a, take a look at this track interval. Well, he, he has been marching up towards him, and we, we watched them very carefully in traffic, and his truck was excellent in traffic. He was just driving around, guys. So Mike Wallace, they made some adjustments there on that last stop, and this truck is really working well. He won the Winston West race earlier today. He got two laps down after the throttle linkage broke up. Andy Houston is in the pit. We'll finish that story in a second. Andy Houston was running pretty well early, but he's got a problem now. Dave Burns? They're going to go to the right side for tires, and they're going to make a track bar adjustment on it and try to get Andy back out of here. And he's gone. Working lap 135 of 186, but this is going to hurt Andy. He may go a lap down here if he's not careful. He may be able to make it back out in time. There's the battle for sixth right now between Dodge uh, of uh, Butch Miller and the Chevy of Jay Sauter as we take a look at our Dodge race recap. Right now our leader is Jack Sprague. He has led 51 of 134. We've had a total of six lead changes now. Only two cautions. Hope we don't jinx ourselves by mentioning that. And we are on a record pace at 113 plus miles an hour. Lap leaders, you can see that Sprague has led the most. Harvick, Biffle, Bliss has even led the, the one lap there. Off the track right now, Lonnie Rush and Lonnie Cox. Not a good day to be named Lonnie. Out of the race, Chris Horn, Ryan McGlynn, Phil Bonifield, and Rick McRae. Watching that battle continuing to go on with Jay Sauter and moving a little bit further back to the battle for 10th as uh, it is the 66 and the 21. The first time we've been able to call Tim Steele's number and here comes the 31 of Kevin Sawinski. So Stefanik is uh, under attack from about four trucks there. In fact, here comes Hornaday. That is all for position right there between the 21, 31, 16, and 66. And Stefanik looks to be the one who was the big loser. He started the lead of that group, and now he's at the back of it. And there is Jimmy Hensley, the 43. Now he is one lap down after having the pit under green. 
Well, and speaking of pit under green, it'll be interesting to see how, what those, what those left side tires are going to look like on Jack Sprague's truck when he finally makes it back down on the pit road. And remember, the word from the pits was that they could go 125 laps on left side. He has been out there now 138 laps. Now make it 139 as Sprague has just crossed the finish line again. There is our race leader. You got to start wondering if he's thinking about, uh, am I going to be on cords here pretty soon? Well, I've been watching the, I've been watching the scoring the last couple of laps, and he has been faster than Wallace. Wallace had it down to as little as about four tenths of a second. Right now, it's up around nine tenths. So. Jack Sprague not suffering too badly. And maybe Mike Wallace slowing down a little bit. There is Mike Wallace. Look at who's behind Mike Wallace, Randy Tolsma. Randy's got that truck back out 21 laps down. They had to fix that sway bar, but clearly it is not suffering for speed. Yeah, he's running uh, the pace uh, of the leaders, but unfortunately he's 21 laps uh, behind because of all the problems. Uh, those are the kind of days as a driver you just really just want to throw away and forget about. Take a look at our Napa Field summary. The rookie points chase, Mike Stefanik, in front there in front of Scott Hansen. In fact, Stefanik right now running 13th. Hansen is 29th. He is 31 laps off the pace, so that's not going to hurt him in that chase. So as uh, you stay on board with Mike Wallace as we're running around uh, this racetrack at a very nice clip, he is trying to track down a guy who is running on left side tires that have been on for 142 laps, Jack Sprague. How long can it go? We'll find out when we come back. Back at Pikes Peak International Raceway, Jack Sprague is holding station about 1.6 seconds ahead of second place Mike Wallace. We are working lap number 147 of 186. Now, we've talked a few times about this golf outing that happened. Well, it's a once-a-year deal that Davey Lee Leininger of uh, Remax puts together for everybody. It was something to see. Uh-oh, I'm in trouble. Uh-oh, did they hit him? I found Benny Parsons' ball. I never had any idea you were such a naturally gifted athlete. Oh, Benny, I love you, baby. We'll see you next week. <laughs> no, that's a, and I know he'll have something for me. Jack Sprague has something for this field right now. We had a great time, and thanks to everybody at Team Remax and at the Sanctuary. It was a blast. Uh, you know, as Sprague is motoring around, he's actually picked up more time on Mike Wallace. I wonder if Wallace has maybe burned his tires down trying to catch up to the front. He's now 2.1 behind. Well, he was sure running that truck hard coming through traffic to get there to get up within about a half a second. So this is the battle here for 11. That is Stefanik in the 66 truck, 10th. Check that. He's actually moved around Sawinski to put him back into 11th. Stefanik has taken over 10th. They've done a lot of improvements. Here comes uh, Ron Hornaday. We're on board with him. He is currently running in 12th. He just cannot seem to get caught up. Now, at this stage, by our calculations, with Stacy Compton being so far back, Ron Hornaday will definitely take over the points lead. Jack Sprague will move into second place. So it's not going to be a total disaster. I know Hornaday always likes to be up front, but right now 12th is going to be enough to give him the points lead. Well, these are the weekends you just have to get through. You have to score some points. If it's not your day, it's not your day. Get through the weekend, get a, get a few points, and move on. And that's what Ron Hornaday is doing. Running eighth in the points right now in the auto trim design Ford. Last week, boy, he was just in the wrong place at the wrong time. He ended up 26th at Memphis after being taken out in an accident caused by some other vehicles. And they have had a great season so far, but right now, he hasn't led a lap today, and he's uh, knocking on the door for the top 10. He's got uh, the 66 of Stefanik right in front of him. But this team has been doing very well all season long. They've been the biggest surprise uh, after last year having a hard time just finding the middle of the pack. They're running up front. 
Meanwhile, back up front, uh, Jack Sprague. Uh, and you've got an update uh, in the pits there, Dave Burns? Marty, I know this is hard to believe, but if this thing goes green the rest of the way, Jack Sprague can make it. That is, if the Goodyears on the left side will go 186 laps. Right now, they know they can make it on fuel, just barely, but those left side tires, they've been on the entire time. And we talked to a bunch of guys, and they had tire problems here last year, and it was with left side tires. Goodyear went back, made another tire. Everyone has been very, very happy with that left side tire. No one has had any problems. That's not to say it's designed to go 186 laps. Well, I'll tell you, and look at up front there. That That is the 99 of Mike Bliss that we just caught a glimpse of. He has dropped all the way back to 13th. What has happened to the XI4? I mean, he's about to go a lap down. Well, we knew Jack Sprague had a good truck. We didn't realize it was this good, but I have to believe he's also going to be very close on fuel. There's the gap now back to Mike Wallace. That's about two and a half seconds back to Mike Wallace. Well, uh, what happened to Bliss? I mean, uh, a few laps ago, he was right there, and all of a sudden, he's uh, back and then now a lap down. Let's get an update on Mike Wallace from Amy East. Chief Tim Cahoot tells me they will have to stop for a splash of fuel. They do not believe they can make it all the way till the end. And if they do come in, they think they'd like to put on some right side tires and have fresh rubber on the right instead of the left that they've been on the entire time. So look for the number two to get a splash of fuel before this thing ends. Well, speaking of pit stops, here comes Ron Hornaday. He was running in about 11th or 12th spot at the last lap, and they're going to go to right sides and uh, try and hope that he can pull off what he pulled off last week. Tim Steele also in. He was running in ninth position at the end of the last lap. So they have got right sides to all the fuel they're going to need to go to the end. Remember last week with about, oh, what was it, a half a dozen or a dozen or so laps to go, Hornaday comes in, gets right sides, and then ends up going right back. Whoa, he's going to pass him on the uh, pit lane. I don't know if that's going to go standing very long, but we'll find out if well, there's a call. The, well, they were past the line, so they can accelerate. If, you, if you're going to accelerate, you're pretty much out on the racetrack, so Ron Hornaday, why wait around? That's true. I did not see the line there, so uh, it probably wasn't. Pass. Very aggressive move by a guy who's known for being a very aggressive racer, Ron Hornaday. There is another aggressive racer looking for his first victory of 1999. Will he get it? Jack Sprague. They are rolling some big dice. We're working lap number 159 here of 186 at the Napa 300K from Pikes Peak International Raceway. Stay with us. takes on two right side tires. Greg Biffle takes on two right side tires. And Biffle gets off a little bit quicker. And with his bad transmission, still has a great report running. Barely. You know what? I think that transmission might have just expired. That might be the end of that, unless it just stripped out first gear. Yeah, I think, I think He's got no fire. They're saying use the clutch, do anything. 66, Mike Stefanik is in. Right now, we're showing only five trucks now on the lead lap because of all the pit stops going on. Stefanik is back out. They've got a great run going. They were in the top 10 when they pulled in for this final pit stop. And the Granger Ford has fired, but boy, he lost a lot of precious time on pit lane. Now, the question becomes, is it for real that the 24 can make it the distance? I, I don't know how those left side tires are going to make it. Marty, you know, I would buy the left side tires before I would buy the fuel. And, and, and I, I really have a hard time believing that they can make it on fuel. I mean, he's still going pretty quick. He's dropped off a couple of miles an hour, but that gap is five seconds back to Wallace. So right now, Jack Sprague about to go by uh, Jay Sauter and put him a lap down. Sauter currently shown in fourth place. Now here's the 99 and two. Now the 99 is already a lap down. Uh, let's get an update from Dave Burns. Marty, earlier you, you were wondering why the 99 was going backwards. Mike Bliss also was out of tires. They could wait no longer. And while we were away on break, they came in and changed the right side tires. And Bliss now can go to the end. He is two laps down. In fact, there are only two trucks on the lead lap right now. The only two that haven't stopped, and here comes one of them. Second place, Mike Wallace pulling into pit lane for his final stop. Amy East is there. Amy, he's your way. Tim Cahoot's going to have the 
Ultra Bad Boys do exactly what he told me they would do, take on right side tires and fuel, although he really had hoped that the 24 truck would be doing the same right now. They're going to take the chance and go for the win. Well, in reality, this frees up Jack Sprague to come and stop because everyone else has stopped. So, so really, this takes the pressure off the 24 team because now they have the margin on the racetrack. All they need to do is come in, have a clean stop, and get that truck back out on the racetrack. So as we continue on this battle, we're working lap number 168 of 186. Mike Wallace is back out underway. Race leader Jack Sprague has just gone by, and as of right now, Jay Sauter is shown in second place, a lap down. Then it is Jimmy Hensley, a lap down. My, uh, Mike Wallace in fourth, one lap down, and Andy Houston, one lap down. So you're right. Sprague does have the luxury of being able to come in, take fuel and tires, if he wants to. Well, with this lead right now, if they're close, if they're that close, why would you take that chance? There's no real reason to take that chance. Well, we're going to find out as they're still rolling the dice in the 24 pit here at Pikes Peak International Raceway in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, the Napa 300K. There's your leaderboard. We're heading towards the checkered flag. Stay with us. Jack Sprague has a lap lead on the field, the first time that it has ever happened in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, but he has slowed his pace down to about 123 to 124 miles an hour per lap to save fuel and what little tires he has left. Dave, you got more? Marty, they still say they can make it all the way on fuel, and the key is Randy Atkin, the gas man. Randy told me, I put 20 gallons in there. We will not need to come in for a splash and go. Oh, we've got a smoker and some flames underneath the 46 of Rob Morgan. And this would bring out a yellow. He's not going to make it around all the way. And this could be the end of the race because Sprague's the only one on the lead lap. The yellow is out. It will be our third yellow of the day, which ties our record for the fewest. Set back in 1995 at Sears Point Raceway. And there is Rob Morgan. And I think if Jack Sprague could, he'd give him a great big kiss. <laughs> <laughs> but the helmet's still on, and that's good news for Rob Morgan. And that is good news. Well, what we thought might be a super dramatic finish to find out whether fuel and tires would come into play on that truck right there, it looks like Dennis Connors' gamble has paid off big time, and now they will have the luxury of being able to come in all alone. You can't pit unless you're on the lead lap. You're right. He's the only one. He'll be the only one. There is Dennis Conner, and boy, what a tip of the hat he is going to get in victory lane two. The six truck is uh, coming down pit lane. That's a bit of a surprise. And, well, the pit, especially because the pit lane is closed. That's, that's the biggest problem with doing that. There is the six truck. The hood is going up, so maybe he had no option but to bring that in. Boy, this is a shame for Randy Renfro. He had a great run going. He was well into the top ten most of the day, battling within the top five. And there is the signal that pit lane is close, and there will be a penalty assessed at the end of the stop. But uh, it may be questionable whether or not the Remax Chevrolet will get back out there. Let's take a look at our field summary. The first time in NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series history, one man on the lead lap. Jack Sprague owns this race. In fact, as you move on down, you can see just how many guys are that far behind. What a dominant performance. What a gutsy call by the 24. And now we're waiting to see if they've opened pit lane. And here he comes. All the trucks that are on the lead lap now enter pit lane. Jack Sprague, you're it. Boy, he's got to feel very confident right now. Well, we watched him yesterday in happy hour, and, and his truck was just so impressive. And let's go down to Dave Burns because he's waiting for Jack Sprague. Jack Sprague's unsolicited tire test for Goodyear is over. Howard Chipwash carries the left front tire out there. He will hand it in to Shane Wilson. They will bolt it on. They'll go to the rear as well. And Jack Sprague will get the rubber that he needed. He'll get some fuel as well. Don't you think that'd be a good idea at this point? 178 laps on the left side tires. Goodyear can be very proud of themselves today. 
Well, they did their homework. They did have some problems here last year, and unfortunately, that is the six truck being rolled back to the transporter. Let's go back down the pit lane. Yep, Randy Renfro had to bring it down pit lane, even though pit lane was closed. He said a water line broke. They also dropped a cylinder, had car problems. They had a bad day, but not really, because Rodney Haygood said good job to Randy Renfro. He did a heck of a job on the track today, and the truck just couldn't make it till the end. And there is the 46 on the hook as uh, they are still trying to get that truck out of uh, harm's way. It's at the exit of turn two on the infield portion. So while they're doing that, uh, we're going to take another commercial break, get ready to take you towards the checker flag and what appears to be a sure victory for Jack Sprague unless something really dramatic goes wrong. Today's coverage of the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series, the Napa 300K, has been brought to you by Chevy S10, like a rock. By the Auto Venche Company, maker of the original vent visor and other quality products. Auto Venche, you're only as cool as your shades. And by Daytona USA, the official attraction of NASCAR. Off into the distance, Pikes Peak, covered in some clouds now at 14,110 feet. In that mix is number 24. There's our race leader, Jack Sprague, the only truck on the lead lap. Coming up next, from Las Vegas, the Senior Classic, the Senior PGA Tour. It'll be right here on ESPN. And guys at golf, uh, we're not going to run you long today. We're uh, heading towards five laps to go here. And that'll be coming up at the bottom of the hour here on ESPN. Jack Sprague at the point here, and we're under 10 laps, so it's a single file restart, and it'll be Mike Wallace at the lead pack of this line because Sprague did pull in for his pit stop. So theoretically, Mike Wallace is going to get his lap back, but there's only going to be four to go. Yeah, he is on the lead lap. There are actually seven trucks on the lead lap technically, but uh, Jack Sprague is going to have to run into some very serious problems for this not to fall his way. Sprague. You know, earlier uh, this week, his daughter, Paige, age four, she fell off a swing, broke the collarbone, she's got it tied up, and she says, you know what, she's one tough kid, she's already swimming with just one arm. Well, it must run in the family, because today, you know, and we've got a spin down in uh, one of the corners, and the caution may come out again. So all well, caution guys... is out, and that means we do, in fact, have seven trucks on the lead lap. These guys are going to drive around, and they're not going to make it easy for Jack Sprague. Dennis Connors having heart failure right now, and Jack Sprague may be right with him. So, Paige, I was getting ready to say, Daddy's getting ready home to bring it home to you, but that's the reason it may not happen just yet. That is Terry Cook with a gone left front tire. So we have four cautions now, and we do not end under the caution in the NASCAR Craftsman Truck Series. So at the worst case scenario is, is that this is gonna be a green-white checkered shootout, a two-lap finale, and all those trucks that were on the lead lap, and let's run it down for you, it's gonna be the 24 of Jack Sprague at the point, Mike Wallace in second, then in third will be Jimmy Hensley, then in fourth, it'll be the 60 of Andy Houston. Fifth, it'll be Kevin Harvick. Sixth, it'll be Ron Hornaday. Guess who finally worked his way back into it? And the last truck in this mix, in seventh, the 55 of Ron Barfield. So while Terry Cook gets some fresh tires, this is going to be an interesting little restart as those guys are going to have to move around to the back of the pack. Take a look at our Super Speedway winners. Last six races. Andy Houston won back at Loudoun last year. Then it was Rick Corelli at St. Louis, Mike Bliss at Phoenix, Jack Sprague at Las Vegas. Then this year, 1999, Mike Wallace at Homestead and Ron Hornaday at Phoenix. So nobody has really repeated, except it could be Sprague today. Could be the first guy to do it. And certainly no one has dominated. It has been very competitive on the super speedways. But this is probably the last thing Jack Sprague wanted yeah, we're getting a little moisture on that uh, lens. Are we getting some rain down on the racetrack? And, and Butch Miller has stopped just short of the finish line. So we may have a, a, a problem for the 18, and Butch had a, a great run going. He was in eighth position. Uh, Dave Burns, you know why? 
I don't, but I do know that it is raining. We have a huge cloud moving in over the south side of the speedway, and just as we went to break, we felt a few sprinkles down here, and now it looks like the cloud may open up at any moment. The word we're getting from NASCAR officials, there is no problem with the 18 truck other than the fact it's being penalized. So obviously he got out of order and he has to hold up because he is the first truck a one lap down. So he had actually gotten a little ahead of himself. Now as the rain drizzles a little bit, we're going to move next week to Kansas City, just outside Kansas City, Missouri for the O'Reilly Auto Parts 200. It's going to be on ESPN at 3.30 Eastern, 12.30 Pacific. That's next Saturday on ESPN. And we hope you can join us. For more, log on to ESPN.com, part of the Go Network, go.com. So now we're going to have to find out if the rain is going to be severe enough to uh, hold us up even more. Let's set this reshoot for you because notice that Mike Wallace has now pulled up right behind Jack Sprague. What looked to be a slam dunk is going to be a shootout for two laps as we're on board with Mike Wallace. The way the rules work, under 10 laps, all trucks on the lead lap move to the front of the line. Everybody else falls in behind from that point on. Do you remember how good Mike Wallace's truck was on the last caution restart? His truck was excellent. Look at those dark clouds there. Pace truck is pulling off. We're getting ready to go green, and it is flying. And Jack Sprague was really bogging it down, trying to hold everybody back. We're going to go green, white truck. He protected the right side because that's the only way you can pass. So now it looks like Wallace is about three truck lengths behind. On board with Ron Hornaday. He's got his hands full. That's about the back of Jimmy Hensley. And boy, has Ron Hornaday ever salvaged a day here on a day when his truck really wasn't very good? This time by, it'll be the white flag. A little bit high, Jack Sprague. Here comes Mike Wallace. Wallace has got a good runoff for. One lap to go. It looks like Wallace has the only shot at taking victory from Jack Sprague. Oh, he's loose. Look at this, Wallace with a runoff too. Well, that's the water, that is the rain. There is some water down in turn two. And here comes Wallace. He's gonna try and go underneath Sprague. Down low, trying to hold the truck down. Look at this, Sprague, Sprague. Up high. Sprague is high through turn four. It's a drag race to the finish line. Wallace, Sprague, who's got it? It's going to be Wallace. Unbelievable. Jack Sprague has got to be heartbroken. The crew has got to be devastated. They had a one lap lead, and all of a sudden, the caution came out when they had made their pit stop. And for Mike Wallace, it's a double today. After winning the Winston West race, after being two laps down, he comes back after being one lap down here to win for the second time and become a two-time winner here in 1999 in the Napa 300K. Look at Mike Wallace. Hold on, buddy. Don't slide it in the wall. Cannot do donuts in the rain very well. In fact, I think NASCAR's outlawed the donuts. <laughs> He's making his way back towards what is the finish line and take another look at this finish well don't forget sprague's right side tires were not as good as wallace's he just gets high in turn three and there's nothing he can do wallace does a phenomenal job to keep the truck down low get off turn four and look at that finish what would have been the largest margin of victory in nascar craftsman truck series history becomes probably the closest the margin was one Hundredth That's why of a it's second. not over till it's over. This is going to be an interesting interview for Mike Wallace. I'm sure he did not expect this. Dave, it's all yours, buddy. And Mike Wallace, I'm sure he cannot believe this as much as we can, as we're about to all get poured on by not only rain, but Gatorade down here. And Mike Wallace, Jimmy Smith coming to congratulate. I cannot believe what you just did after winning earlier today in the West race. And they are just celebrating like crazy down here. They can't believe it either. Mike, did you think you had any shot at Jack Sprague when you knew he was so far ahead? I thought he stole the race from us. You know, I'm going to tell you what this crew right here did. We were about ready to get a lap down. You know, this thing was handling terrible. It was pushing terrible. But uh, it calmed down here. The guys, they just did phenomenal. That's what I wanted. 
I wonder racing for the finish. You know. Take us through that last lap, Mike. Clean the tires off. Timmy said he's gonna get he'll be loose on you. Try. Good job. Thank you, man. Thank you, Ronnie. Ron Horn today jumping in to congratulate Mike. I tell you what, this is such a, you know, for the people that don't know, we won a Winston, Winston West race here earlier today. Turn around and won this race in the last lap in dramatic fashion. You know, we, we got a tough team. We, we all got a little bickering match yesterday afternoon here, and we all got tough. You know, our Ford F-150 hauled the mail all day long, ASE, Ultra Motorsports, Wagner Brake Snap-on Tools. Carla, we won a big one here today, babe. And my daughter, Christy's birthday yesterday, Lindsay and Matt, everybody at home. And, you know, it can't be, this was, this was racing. This was racing. Now, you know, we were, we were three seconds from getting a lap down. Come in and made a right rear spring change, put on right side tires, and I drove my butt off. And, uh, man, that was cool. I, did. I mean, that was, a, that was a way to race right there. And Mike Wallace is in victory lane for the second time in 1999. Couldn't have been more spectacular. That is absolutely correct. Take a look at these two guys leaning on each other to the finish line. One one hundredth of a second on the clock as Mike Wallace just edges out. Second place, Jack Sprague. Let's go down to Amy East with the winning crew chief. I've had a lot of fun standing here with crew chief Tim Cahooth. He's just in awe. Two in one day. You made awesome decisions in the pits all day. Tell me about some of your strategy. Did you know that's what you were going to do coming into this truck race today? We thought we'd be really good. Uh, you know, we were just at the beginning and we weren't very good at all. We came within a couple feet of losing a lap and we got a caution at the right time for a change. And uh, the thing really come to life after some adjustments. And normally I'm happy winning one race a day and two's pretty cool. Smith might make me go somewhere tonight and race again. I don't know. I just want to say hi to all my friends up in PA and my dad. I hope he's watching and we're going to be having a good time. Okay, go congratulate your driver. That's Tim Cahooth and the Ultra Bad Boys were truly awesome today. They certainly were, Amy. What a comeback. And I don't think anybody's going to forget this race for quite a while. And when we do come back, we're going to try and talk to a very disappointed, understandably, Jack Sprague. We're back at Pikes Peak International Raceway, where we have just had one of the most astounding finishes in series history. It's now official at 13 one thousandth of a second. And Dave is with Jack Sprague, and I, I don't envy you on this one. He's got to be just dejected. Well, he is, Marty, as you might expect. And Jack, we know you almost had it. You pushed the limit all day long. What happened on the last lap? Well, it's just one of those deals. First of all, I want to say hi to my daughter, Paige, and my wife, Rhonda. I promised them I'd do that. And, uh, these guys on this GMAC team, I never lost confidence in them, and they never lost confidence in me. And I think we figured out what it takes to make this body work. And uh, this thing was awesome. I mean, it, it showed all day. And, you know, we had 100 laps on our right side tires. We we're the only truck in the lead lap. You know, we were going to run four laps out there and finish the race. Got another caution they got on my tail. They had 20 laps on the right side, 100, and just couldn't hold them. I mean, I was just loose, couldn't keep it on the bottom, and uh, got beat again. Jack, do you think the way that you know the setup now, will that work everywhere else aside from Pikes Peak? Well, the direction we went in will work, and, uh, you know, this thing was awesome. I think it showed it. It's just uh, very disheartening to, to lead all day and not win the race, and the guys did a great job in the pits, and, you know, it just came down to, to old rights and new rights, and I couldn't hold them. All right, Jack, thanks very much. Good luck next time. He'll be back. Let's take a look at the final results. For the third time this season, Jack Sprague is going to finish second, and it's the second victory for Mike Wallace. Take a look at the double arrows. That means Sprague led the most laps. You get five points for every one of those arrows that you see there. So as you page on down through the official results, take a look at Stacy Compton, our former points leader. He was in 28th position. When we come back, we'll wrap things up from Pikes Peak International Raceway. Don't go away. truck series turned out to be just incredible we've never seen anything like this as we get ready to take a look at the championship points chase now ron hornaday has moved into the points lead stacy compton drops from first to third jack sprague is 44 behind in second spot kevin harvick now fourth biffle drops to sixth 
Wallace jumps up to seven. Sauter, Sawinski, and Setzer round out the top ten. Just an incredible day. None of us have ever been in a race where, with four laps to go, that you had a one full lap lead and it ended up changing entirely. Next race, the O'Reilly Auto Parts 200 from Kansas City. Next Saturday, 3.30 Eastern. And that's going to do it for us. Four, Jeremy Dale, Amy East, Dave Burns, I'm Marty Reed. Senior PGA is up next. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. Part of the go. Spraggy.